Hello friends, welcome to Daily Sourdough. Today I have a really fun recipe for you. We are making Al Taglio pizza. In Rome, this pizza is cooked in a sheet pan and then cut into pieces with scissors and sold by the cut. So Al Taglio means by the cut. Well, let's get started. First, we put in one cup of our sourdough starter and this is fed. So I fed this starter about six hours ago. So we'll put a cup of starter in our bowl and to that we will add one and a half cups of water. And remember to use either spring water or well water, not water with chlorine because the chlorine will kill the, the wild yeast and the bacteria which make our dough rise then stir it until that starter dissolves and we'll let that sit for 15 minutes. Now that our starter and water has rested for 15 minutes, let's add some olive oil. The olive oil will make a softer and richer dough. So we'll add three tablespoons of olive oil to this water and starter. Next, add three cups of flour, and we'll add the flour all at once. We'll just mix this with a spoon and it will be a shaggy mess, and we'll let it rest. We'll cover this and let it sit on the counter for 30 minutes. Our pizza dough has been sitting on the counter for 30 minutes, so it's time to do our first stretch and fold. So with your hand, just reach under the dough and lift it up and see how sticky it is? This is a very high hydration pizza dough. High hydration just means that there's a lot of water in comparison to the flour in this dough, but that also means that it will be a very light and airy dough. The first stretch and fold will be an aggressive one because the wild yeast haven't developed the bubbles yet and made the dough light and airy. So just work that dough with your hand doing several stretches and folds and this will help the gluten to begin developing. You can see already the texture is beginning to change. It's beginning to tighten a little bit. That's all there is to it. We'll let it sit on the counter for another 30 minutes. Our dough's been resting on the counter for 30 minutes and it's time to add the salt. I have two and a half teaspoons of salt in this bowl. So add two tablespoons of warm water, then stir it to partially dissolve the salt. Next, pour it over your dough and then we'll begin stretching and folding to incorporate that salt water into the dough. And this is going to take a little time to get that flour to absorb the salt water. If your dough is really sticky, then add a quarter cup of flour at this time. If your dough is a little bit dry, then dip your hand in a bowl of water and continue stretching and folding. You can see that the dough is beginning to absorb that water. So we'll just continue to stretch and fold. Reach under the dough and gently pull it up and stretch it over itself. This is a much more gentle stretch and fold than the first one because the dough is very tender now. The yeast is beginning to work and form the bubbles and we don't want to pop the bubbles because that's what makes our dough so airy. And after the water has been absorbed into the flour, do one more 360 stretch and fold. See how tender that dough is now? You can tell it, the gluten is forming and it's beginning to rise. It's beginning to create bubbles inside the dough. And after all of this is incorporated and you've done your last 360 fold, then we will cover it and let it sit on the counter for another 30 minutes. And at this time you can let it sit on the counter for an hour if you like to just give it a little extra time to rise. So depending on how warm your house is, let it sit on your counter for 30 to 60 minutes. Our dough's been sitting on the counter for 30 minutes and it's time for our last stretch and fold. 
Now this dough is still very wet. I used just your basic white flour and different flours absorb water in different ways like whole wheat flour with all of its fiber still in it absorbs water very quickly. So at this point I'm going to add about a quarter cup of flour to my dough just to stiffen it slightly. Then we'll do our last stretch and fold. By doing this we are assisting the yeast in creating bubbles in the dough, making air pockets. This is helping to develop the gluten, make the dough a little stretchier, and just a touch more flour. Try not to add any more flour than a total of three and a half cups. It's stiffening the dough just slightly, just enough to make it a little more manageable. Since it's still sticky, I'm going to dip my hands in the warm water and finish my stretch and fold. This dough is now ready to go into the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours, depending on your schedule and when you want to cook it tomorrow. I'm going to cook it for lunch, but it would easily wait until dinner. And we'll cover it and put it in the refrigerator and we'll see you tomorrow. It's the next day. I put my pizza dough in the refrigerator last night at 8 o'clock. Then I took it out this morning at 10. It's been sitting on my counter for two hours and it's ready to cook. See how it's risen double and there are bubbles in the dough? Let's look at the bottom. Lots of bubbles means there's lots of activity and it fermented for a good long time meaning it will be easy to digest. So let's make our pizza. First, pour some olive oil in the bottom of your pan. A couple of tablespoons is the right amount. Then spread it out with your hand, coating the entire cookie sheet. I bought this inexpensive cookie sheet just for this pizza because of its dark color. That gives it a crispier crust. Then put your pizza dough on the pan And using your hands, just gently spread it out so that it covers the pan. And as the dough begins to relax, it will, it will begin to cover the pan, even to the corners. Now we'll put some olive oil on the top of our pizza dough, probably two or three tablespoons. And then just continue to work that dough so that it fills the whole pan. And it'll take a minute just because it's it needs to relax a little. It's very soft dough, so it's very pliable. One of the unique ingredients in this Altaglio pizza is sour cream. And I'm going to spread about eight ounces of sour cream over the top of this pizza dough. And as you can see, it's a little difficult to spread since the dough is very soft and you have some olive oil spread over it. So just take a minute and gently spread the sour cream out. And that might seem like a lot of sour cream, but the dough is going to rise and envelop that sour cream so that it will hardly even be noticeable when it's cooked. It gives it a delicious tangy flavor, which complements all the other ingredients to make a really fun pizza. I'm always amazed at how you can make these breads rise without commercial yeast. It just takes a little extra time. You just have to give it time in the refrigerator or on your counter and it will rise just as well as it does with commercial yeast. Next, slice a red onion very thinly and we'll probably use this whole onion. It gives it a really good flavor. So just pull the little pieces apart and put it across your pizza. This is one of those recipes that you are going to come back to again and again. It's very simple to make. It doesn't take a lot of time in the kitchen. You just have to plan for it a day in advance so that you can let your dough rise and ferment for at least 12 hours. That gives it that rich, tangy flavor and it allows the good bacteria and the good wild yeast to help, help you digest that gluten. This red onion is 
makes it pretty too. Next, take one pound of round sausage. This is just your basic breakfast sausage and just pull it apart and spread it randomly on your pizza. These are really fun ingredients and together they make such a delicious pizza. And this looks like a lot, but it, it shrinks up. You'll be glad you filled up the pizza with it. Okay, I think we've covered every square inch of this pizza. Now it's time for the cheese. Now take one pound of fresh mozzarella and just like the sausage, just break the pieces off and place them on your pizza. This fresh mozzarella is so much better than the grated stuff you buy in a package because it melts much more smoothly. The grated cheese has a coating on it that doesn't allow it to melt quite as smoothly. So if you can, use the fresh mozzarella. Okay, it's ready to put in the oven. My oven is preheated to 500 degrees, and I know that's a really hot oven, but if your oven can cook safely at 500 degrees, then cook it at that temperature. If not, reduce your temperature to 450. I'll set my timer for 15 minutes, and then after that, we're going to grate some Parmesan cheese over the top. Our timer's going off, so it's time to grate the Parmesan cheese over the top of the pizza. Ooh. So grate about half a cup of Parmesan cheese over the top. That gives it a, a nice depth of flavor to your pizza. Now we'll leave it in the oven for another five minutes. It's been a total of 20 minutes and our pizza is ready. Woo! Look at this. Slightly browned on the top. The crust is nice and dark the way I like it. Oh, that is gonna be good. Let your pizza cool slightly and then we'll cut into it. Altaglio pizza is traditionally cut with scissors so let's cut into it. This is kind of fun for kids too. Oh boy. Oh boy, this looks good. Let's dig into this. so good. This is one of my family's very favorites. It's so tangy. You have the tang of the sourdough crust, the tang of the sour cream, you have the sweet onions, the delicious sausage and cheese all combined to make a really hearty meal, which is easy on your stomach. If you like the looks of this pizza, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Daily Sourdough because I have many more recipes to share with you.